Hi everybody, welcome back. Right, should we see what we're doing today? Let me share my screen. We can get cracking. Here we go. So we are on a new text today. We are on the book, The Explorer by Catherine Randall, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm really excited because it's one of my favorite books. So let's have a look and see what we're gonna be doing with that book today. First of all, we're going to be trying to make a prediction using evidence from the text. And we've done that before at the beginning of um, the Great Capebook Tree. And we are also going to be using our summarising skills again. And again, we did that with the Great Capebook Tree and we did that with our poetry. So we should be getting really good at that by now. And then we're going to use evidence from the text to draw a picture. OK, and we did a similar activity like that before. So all the activities are quite similar, but just with a new book. So we're really getting to grips with this new book today. Right, let's check we've got everything we need. So you need a pen or pencil to write with, some blank paper because you're gonna be doing some drawing today, um, your, some lined paper or your English book, and you need some colored pens or pencils for your drawing. So if you want to press pause, go and get everything you need and then come back when you're ready. Right, let's start with the game. So today's game is a little bit different. So I want you to open up a page in your English book and I want you to start by writing the word pineapple okay and pineapple is a noun it's a name of a fruit so we're going to write the name pineapple at the start and pineapples are often found in the amazon rainforest so we're going to start with the word pineapple okay and now we're going to add to this word so at each step of this game i want you to rewrite the next part underneath okay so we're starting with the word pineapple at the top of our page and now i want you to add a determiner to the front of pineapple so you can decide whatever you want you could write two pineapples you could write the pineapple you could write a pineapple you could write lots of pineapples so i want you to just write anything you want on that second line as long as you've got a determiner and the noun pineapple press pause until you've done that okay step three step three i want you to add in two adjectives with that comma in between to um, separate the two. So we're going to have our determiner, then we're gonna have our two adjectives, and then we're gonna have the noun pineapple on the end. So you might have the something something pineapple, or a something something pineapple. So you're gonna start with your determiner and noun that you've already got. You're gonna rewrite underneath the determiner, then your two adjectives, and then your noun, and check you've got that comma in between. Off you go. Press pause until you're ready. Okay, step four. So same thing. So we're going to go from our step three. And this time, all I want you to do is copy step three, but I want you to add in a prepositional phrase to give more information about that pineapple or those pineapples. Okay, so you might write admit, amidst, which means in, in between, and you might have something to do with a tree or on or in or with or between, and then an extra piece of information. Press pause while you do that. And finally, we're going to make your phrases into a simple sentence. So something actually has to happen now. So I want a full sentence with a verb in it, with a capital letter at the end, and a full uh, capital letter at the beginning, sorry, and a full stop at the end. And I want that ad, um, expanded noun phrase, including your prepositional phrase, in that sentence somewhere. Okay, have a go. And then we're going to check our work in a second. So press pause until you're ready. Okay, shall we have a look at what I wrote? So yours won't be exactly the same as mine, but it will give you an idea about what we're going to do. We're going to have another go at this game tomorrow. So if you found it really difficult, don't worry, we'll have another try tomorrow. So let's have a look and see what I wrote. So I started with the word pineapple. That was nice and easy, wasn't it? Then we had to put a determiner in front of it. So I chose a number, two pineapples. So I said we were having two pineapples. So that's determiner and noun. And now I'm going to expand my noun phrase with two adjectives. So I chose two huge, juicy pineapples. So I've got huge, which describes its size, and juicy, which is about its taste, isn't it? So remember, those two adjectives need to contrast. Not, they shouldn't be about the same thing. Then I added in my prepositional phrase. So I've got two huge, juicy pineapples with tough outer shells. Okay, so with tough outer shells is my prepositional phrase, using the word with, that preposition at the beginning. And then I turned it into a sentence. So I've got two huge juicy pineapples with tough outer shells were hanging. So I've got a verb in there now. 
from the branches of the tree. So I've just got one thing happening in my sentence, one verb chain. So it's a simple sentence. Okay, now yours might be different to that. Just check that you've got each stage. So check stage one. Have you got just a noun? She should have the word pineapple. Give it a tick. If you have then got a determiner and a noun, give it a tick. If you've then added in those two adjectives and remembered your comma, you can give it a tick. If you've forgotten to add that comma, just put it in, in a different colour now. And then have you got a prepositional phrase? And then have you got just one thing happening because I want a simple sentence last? Okay, so we'll have another go at that game tomorrow with a different noun. Well done if you managed all of the steps. Don't worry if you didn't. We're going to come back to it tomorrow and perhaps you can do one extra step tomorrow. Right, let's have a look and see what else we're doing today, shall we? So we're going to be looking at the book, The Explorer. I love this book. We're only going to have time for a tiny extract from it. But if you can get your hands on this book, it is a fantastic read. Um, you may be able to read it yourself if you're a really good reader, or you might want mum or dad or one of your family to read it to you maybe at bedtime, but it is a fantastic book. It's very exciting. There's lots of drama in it. So it's about a group of four children who end up stranded in the Amazon jungle, in the Amazon rainforest, and they have to try and survive all by themselves. So the main characters are called Fred, Con, Lila, and Max. And Lila and Max are brother and sister. The other children um, are not related, but Lila and Max are brother and sister. So Lila's an older sister, and Max is the younger brother. So the extract we're going to be looking at is from page 107. So it's quite a way into the book. So the children have been stuck in this rainforest quite a long time. You can see, here's the whole book. This is where we're going. We're going right into the book to chapter 10. And each um, chapter has got a name rather than a number. So you can see here, can you see that? And they've each, the beginning of each chapter has got quite a nice illustration around it as well. Can you see that? Okay, so there's, there's the illustrations around it. Okay, and you can see it's called abacaxi, which means pineapple, which is why we started with the word pineapple today. So let's have a look at it and think about this text. So in front of you now, you've got just the nouns from the first little part of the extract. Okay, so we've got heads, tree, branches, animal, bread, eyes, vulture, branches, head ground, pineapple, distance, vultures, corpse, animal, lila, birds, vultures, ground, vulture, tree, feathers. So they're all nouns from the very first part of the extract. So we're going to have a think now, what might be happening in this part of the story? So we can look for some clues. So we know it involves just two of the children, Fred and Lila, because they're the only children whose names we've got there. The word vulture is mentioned a lot. We've got the word here, corpse. And corpse means the dead body of, a, of something. So we've got corpse. So something quite dramatic is happening here. Okay, what do you think is happening? Use those clues. And I want you to just press pause for a second and write in your book your prediction of what you think is going to happen just in this tiny extract. Okay, and why you think that. So I want you to use evidence from that list to say why you think that's going to happen. Okay, press pause and have a go at that now. Right, we're gonna find out whether your predictions were correct because we're gonna read the extract now. And then at the end, you might be able to compare your prediction with what actually happened. So let's have a little look at this text and see what actually happens in the text from the Explorer. So oh, here we go. I'm going to read you some of it and then I'm going to get you to read some of it yourself. OK, above their heads rose a great flowering white tree. From one of the branches hung a small animal, unlike anything Fred had ever seen before. It was looking up with huge eyes at a vulture in the branches above its head. On the ground below it, on the ground below it were three chunks of pineapple untouched. And some distance away, two more vultures crouched over the corpse of a larger version of the same animal. Get away, yelled Lila. She ran forward, kicking at the birds. Get away from it! The two vultures on the ground took off, startled, but the vulture in the tree only ruffled its feathers. 
It was enormous, as broad as a Labrador around the middle, and its eyes watched the tiny animal hungrily. The animal on the branch let out a mew like a cat. It was grey-brown with a cream face, a dog-like snout, and immense black eyes. Its arms were long and chicken bone thin, ending in curved claws. It was small enough to cup in your hands. Lila ran to the base of the tree, gripped the lowest branch, and scrabbled with her feet against the trunk. The vulture, feeling the tree shape, flapped its wings, cawed, and disappeared. So you can finish reading that section of the story now by yourselves and then we'll read it together. You want to press pause until you've had a chance to read it. Okay, hopefully you've read it yourself. So Lila heads up the tree and she's pretty concerned about this situation, isn't she? And Fred says he can hear her whispering prayers under her breath. So she's pretty worried and pretty concerned about this. I wonder if that's what you thought was going to happen from your predictions. I'm sure you worked out that it was something to do with vultures. And maybe you drew on some previous knowledge you had and knew that vultures quite often eat creatures that are dead. So that was where the corpse came in. I think they would get fancied that for the tea. So we will find out at the very end of that extract in a minute to see if your prediction was totally right. But what I want you to think about now is summarising what's just happened. So we're going to use that who, what and why again. Okay, so who is the key person in this extract? What happened and why? Okay, so I want you to press pause and I want you to see if you can write a sentence now that answers who, what and why. So you can either write it as a sentence or you can write those questions who, what and why in your book and you can write who and the answer what and the answer and why and the answer. See if you can summarise that extract in as few words as you possibly can. So press pause and off you go. Right, how did you get on? Did you manage to summarise? So let's see, who was it really about? So actually the main part, although it mentioned Matt's the main person in this extract was Lila. And Lila climbed a tree why did she climb that tree? Because she wanted to rescue an animal from the vultures. So those, that, those vultures were going to get that tiny animal, weren't they? And that's what she was wanting to make sure didn't happen. So now we're gonna think a bit more about that tiny animal. So we don't know what kind of animal it is at the moment. So let's have a look at some information from the text to help us. So you can see here I've highlighted just the parts of the first part of the text which talk about the animal. So it starts with, a small animal. So from one of the branches hung a small animal. And you can see here's the word a small animal. And then I've highlighted huge eyes. So this animal, it was a small animal, but his eyes were obviously quite large compared to the size of its body. There was a corpse, so there was a dead body, so something's going horribly wrong here, isn't it? The corpse of a larger version of the same animal on the ground. But this was a smaller version. Okay, so perhaps it was a baby. So what I want you to do, I'm gonna show you the next couple of extracts. And I want you to see if you can pick out the key points about that animal. And then you're gonna draw me a picture. Okay, so you can have a blank page and you're gonna draw a picture using the information from the text to help you. And you're gonna label again, like we did before. Okay, so you're gonna draw this animal and you might label it with a small animal. And then you might draw its eyes and you're going to label that huge eyes. And then you're going to look at all the other bits of the extract and see if you can add extra information. Can you work out what kind of animal it is? It doesn't matter if you get it slightly wrong, but try and use that information from the text to help you, okay? So as you see each part of the text, press pause, draw the next part, or you can read all three pages again, and then you can go back and press pause at each one and use the information to label your picture. Okay, so let's have a look at the next page now. Okay, have a look at that. Search for any information about that animal, not about the vultures, just about that small animal. Okay, and label them on your picture. Press pause until you finish with that page. Here's the third page to help you with, with that labeling of that animal. Okay, and once you've used the third page, you're going to come back and we're going to have a look and find out what actually happened. So, 
Here we go then. So hopefully you've drawn your wonderful picture. You've got this beautiful picture drawn. Hopefully you have labelled it with a small animal and huge eyes because they were the things that we had already. I don't think you needed the corpse of a larger version of the same animal, but you might have decided to draw the small animal and the larger animal. And if you have, that's fine. Let's see what other evidence we had. So if we go through here, the, the animal on the branch let out a mew like a cat. So you may have done a speech bubble and put mew inside it and then labelled it with mew like a cat. And then we had some information down here. It was grey brown with a cream face. So hopefully you've drawn a grey brown body and a cream coloured face. A dog like snout, so that means a nose. And immense black eyes. So these eyes are obviously really key to this character, aren't they? Its arms were long and chicken bone thin. So we don't want big fat arms, we want really thin arms on your picture. And ending in curved claws. So you should have had claws that were curved over and it was small enough to cup in your hands so you may have decided to draw hands underneath it cupping it to show how small it was but it should have been a pretty small picture and then let's have a look is there any extra information in section three so she sat on the branch so this first bit's about lila heading up the tree so that's not relevant to our picture she sat on the branch where the animal perched so the animal was perched on the branch and then she, it says, with quivering fingers. So you might have drawn the branch. And it says, with quivering fingers, so that's Lila's fingers, she unwound its legs from the branch. So it's going to have its legs round the branch, okay? And then she re-round them around her arm, and the creature let out a mewling sound again, so a mew again. And that's all the information we have. So I wonder, did you work out? So you've got this drawing now, it's all labelled. Do you know what kind of animal it is or not? Shall we find out what kind of animal it is? She stumbled as she landed on the ground and half fell, but made sure to keep the arm with the animal high above her head. Max ran to her. What is it? Let me see. It's a sloth, said Lila. Her voice was hushed with awe. A baby sloth. Fred stepped closer. It was one of the most extraordinary things he'd ever seen. It was very ugly and very beautiful, both at once. Its fur still had the fluffiness of babyhood. Let's make it play, said Max. He grabbed at Lila's arm. So did you work out it was a sloth? There was a good clue, wasn't there? I wonder if Splash was shouting out the answer to you as he was going along. Because as soon as it said his legs were curled around the branch, I thought you might have got a clue over here because his, uh, his legs are definitely curled around the branch. And you can also see his round claws in this picture. And you can see how obvious his eyes are because of the cream color of his face. So did you work out it was a, it was a sloth? You might want to add some extra labels to your um, picture because we had down here its fur still had the fluffiness of babyhood so you might want to add in some fluffy fur to show how fluffy the creature was well done I'm glad you had a good go at that right let's see what we're doing tomorrow so tomorrow we're going to reread the extract of the explorer so we've really got a clear idea of what's happening in that extract in our minds and we're going to focus now on understanding a bit more about the characters and why the author's chosen some of the words that she has to put in that book. And we're gonna go back and have a look at identifying expanded noun phrases. Well done, you've worked really hard today and I will see you tomorrow. And yeah, you're right, Splash, we're definitely going to start with a game. See you tomorrow. <laughs>